You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, I'm Ragna. Hi, I'm Dave. We are from the Estonian Cricket Association. And you're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. And on the podcast, we have started a new series on the podcast, looking at associate nations within cricket and how they are developing the game in their country. Many of us cricket fans know so much about the established cricketing countries and not enough on the associate nations who play cricket. So it would be nice to learn about those associate countries and via the podcast, people can learn more as well. For today's Associate Cricket Series episode, we are discussing all things Estonia cricket. Joining me to discuss and talk all things Estonia cricket is David Robson, Development and Communications Manager of the Estonia Cricket Association, and Ragna Halak, Estonia women's cricketer and lead coach of the Estonia Cricket Association Schools Programme. David and Ragna, welcome. Hello. Thank you. <clears throat> it's great to have you here, guys, to, to talk about Estonia cricket really because i think a lot of people listening and watching this podcast episode would say cricket in estonia no that can't be right you don't associate cricket in estonia it's like with many other associate countries you, you say no they, they don't play cricket there but when you actually do the research and you find out they're a, an associate member of the icc then you realize yeah they do play cricket there and people do understand what the sport is about so i think for many people, will be an eye-opener today in this episode. Certainly for me, definitely I will learn a lot as well. But also people who watch and listen to the podcast will learn more as well about Estonia and, and how cricket ties in uh, with the culture and, and society over there, which is fantastic. So definitely we're going to learn more about that as we progress in this chat. But David and Ragnar, as I do with all my guests that I've interviewed on the podcast, I'd like to take them back to when they first got into cricket. And it's been very fascinating listening to people's memories on how they started to get into cricket. So, David and Ragnar, let's go back to the very beginning of your cricketing journeys. What were your earliest memories of watching, playing, and even going to the cricket? Who wants to answer this first? Well, mine's probably a bit longer, so I'll probably uh, start off. Uh, my earliest memories of cricket is just playing cricket in the backyard with my dad and my brother. Um, my dad was a very good cricketer and uh, got us onto it early. I think three or four, we were in the backyard hitting the balls around and got into organized cricket when we were eight or nine and have been playing ever since. Yeah. Uh, played in Sydney and uh, moved to Canberra when I was about in my twenties. And uh, one of my good mates moved to Estonia and then I came over here. So it's just really been the story of my life is cricket and, and it's taken me amazing places. Yeah, Aww. absolutely. And it's um, taking you to, to uh, Estonia of all places um, to grow and develop the game of cricket. So that's quite fascinating to hear that, David, about your story and journey in cricket. Um, Ragnar, your journey into cricket will be different to others because you're from Estonia and a uh, different sort of upbringing to many traditional cricket fans from many traditional cricketing countries. They have a traditional upbringing in the game, but yours is quite different being from Estonia. So just tell us about your introduction into the game of cricket. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't play back around, uh, backyard cricket yet, but working on it. <laughs> Uh, but I got introduced to the game in 2020 when he came and at a comp company event, they just had a black plastic kit out and I was told just hit the ball and run to the goal to the wicket to these posts. I even managed to poke <laughs> one of the guy's finger because I didn't know I'm an unstriker and the ball was hitting back to the uh, kick, back, yeah, oh, sure thrown enough. back to the bowler. And it was funny. It was obviously a, a party, so I wasn't sober or I was in heels. There's great pictures of it. I'm so glad that there's pictures of my first time in cricket. But then after yeah. that, obviously, a lot of Aussies at the party uh, were like, yeah, come come to practice. 
there was a little bit of luring with pizza and drinks afterwards. And uh, I've been out of sports for a couple of years by that point. So yep. I was happy to do something sporty, but not like I saw it. It's a little bit like standing around as well. So it doesn't take the most out of you. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> but yeah, after that, so it's three plus years now. Yep. Since the ladies have now just picking up, I was right away in the national squad and doing more and more every day. Yes. Um, obviously, uh, many people won't know, but you are a part of the women's team, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And you were a part of uh, the team. And you just explain to those uh, people who may be listening about uh, your sort of uh, involvement in the in the women's team and, and what you do there. Since we played football in the backyard, <laughs> I, <laughs> I was in a football team in school as well the one the women's one and i don't like running so i, I was like oh goalie came to cricket i'm like actually can i be could keep i don't want to run around <laughs> so uh for almost three years i was wicket keeping and batting and didn't enjoy bowling at all but my body's giving up and i can't keep that much anymore so i've come to the fielding side and with co learning how to coach new newbies I need to know how to bowl <laughs> so I started to enjoy that part as well yeah but I think my strongest side in the game is the fielding side and yeah. encouraging my teammates because I have a really loud voice <laughs> <laughs> well that sort of fits into being a keeper they're always loud the <laughs> Really talking to him. Yes, they're always chirping <laughs> away. <butterflies>. Yes. <laughs> yeah, now they're always chirping away. They're always, um, you know, getting the team up and getting the morale up. So that's fantastic. And David, uh, you were involved in the men's team as well. You, you only played a couple of games, but tell us about that experience for you. Yeah, so I uh, qualified for the men's team last year after living in Estonia for three years. Uh, which is the ICC qualification for residents. Um, I was involved on the management side before that uh, as well. So I've been around the, the team and, and the trainings and stuff for a while. Uh, but yeah, it was a really amazing thing to, to play international cricket, to go to a place like Gibraltar, to play in their amazing facilities there. Um, and just to get Estonia's first T20I win was pretty special as well. And to have yeah. the opportunities that we have in Europe at the moment with European Cricket Network and, and the tournaments they run, it's just a really exciting time to be involved in European cricket. Yeah, ab absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, David, who were some of your cricketing idols growing up, obviously coming from Australia, traditional cricket background yeah if being being, might... a, being a left-hander myself uh michael bevan was yeah. a big big uh idol for me um i liked mark war a lot when i was mm. young as well but then uh adam gilchrist blew them all out of the water so yeah gilly's sort of it for me yeah definitely uh ragnar um obviously in your experience of watching cricket uh, obviously not growing up with the game but you would have seen other games of cricket around the world from like all the international teams like Australia, England, India, et cetera. Um, anyone that you've gravitated towards to be your favorite female cricketer from the, the teams around the world that you've seen? Thanks to ECN, uh, I've watched a lot of the women's stuff. Otherwise I don't watch a lot of sports. I, I live, <laughs> I do it every day. So I'm like some little bit away from it. But I do in, uh, enjoy how uh, the previous captain of the Netherlands women's team, uh, what was her name? Oh my God, Babette Delaney? Delaney. Delaney, thank you. Uh, I like that she's, she's a keeper as well. She's a great batter. So I really enjoyed watching her play. Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, she's a tall as well. So she has the same struggle as, as me, we could keep <laughs> 
Ah, <laughs> uh, well, um, have you have you watched any videos on keeping, from, like learning tips and, and advice on how to keep wicket? Definitely, it was it was my main focus in the beginning of my cricket career is to cape and to save bowlers uh, backside. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, a lot. Yeah. And nowadays, um, since I've put that hat down, that's not the saying in English. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I do I do help out with a little bit of coaching on the yeah. national side and I do coaching on, on our club level. So if anybody's like, oh, I want to do keeping, I'm like, yes, here's all of my knowledge. <laughs> Here you go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, are you more comfortable standing back to quick bowling or standing up to spinners? It's women's cricket. <laughs> we don't really have quick <laughs> bowling. <laughs> I didn't say you did. Um, um, you know, we have... Back. Yeah, we have one one little bit who has speed on it and just a couple of steps. Depending what fielder I have, if I have any slips or fine leg is another on the other side. But I like to dive. I'm like, yeah, you you're bowling a no ball leg side. I'm like just jumping for it and regretting <laughs> it later, but yeah. No, that's fantastic. That's game fantastic. If I don't end up on my ass. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's that's fantastic. It shows you're enthusiastic about keeping. Oh, really? um, David, any particular <laughs> cricketing position or role that you excelled in, either batting, bowling, or fielding, or an all rounder? Um, I think my whole career has been based around bowling. Um, the batting. You know, it, it. I can hit a ball a long way if it comes off, but I don't know that the technique's fantastic. But um, playing things like T10, that's not so important these days. But yeah. I think really, I'd, I'd say the bowling was was the main thing I focus on, and I think it's what I what I can give to the team on the national level at least is is the bowling, and uh, hope the batters get enough runs. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, as a bowler, you need runs on the board. I... I'm sort of in that boat as well. I'm a <clears throat> that's sort of my role in the, in the team I play for here in Australia. A bowler that bats at number eleven. <laughs> that's my role. Um, so you got to got to make sure that the batters do their job and and all that stuff. But that, that's wonderful to hear about your cricketing journeys. There are two different sides of the world, uh, but you've found the game of cricket and you enjoy it and you're enthusiastic and. You know, you're doing some great stuff in Estonia as well, which we'll talk about later on in this in this interview. Um, any tips and advice you would give to people who are wanting to come into the into the game if they're from Estonia and they're curious and they want to say, "Oh, this is an interesting sport," and they take up this. Any advice would you give to any uh, boy and girl who want to aspire to play cricket for for, for Estonia? Well, I, I think. On the men's side, uh, there's a lot of opportunity. We just last year started a second division, so there's a bit more opportunity for newer players to learn the game before they start getting hit to every part of the ground. Um, uh, we had a lot of very close games in that second division, so it was really nice to see that worked out. And I think, um, you know, there's there's a few clubs around. There's There's one club in particular that is mostly Estonians, uh, so you can play with people that speak your language, you know, and people that have learned in Estonia, they're still learning, so there's no, there's no need to think you need to come and uh, know everything straight away. Uh, there's lots of support there if you need it, and, uh, yeah, it's a good time to get involved because we're going places. And I think from the women's side... From the women's side, if uh, if it's not the hardest sport to do, there's like I said, there's a lot of standing around. So it's not like oh, physically I'm like I have to be fit. I'm like no, you come there, you have a good time. If you're keen on honing your skill, boom, you're on the national team because <laughs> the numbers that can yeah. play and the ICC regulations, yeah. 
small for now. Oh. Yeah. So for now, it's easier to get on a yeah. national team. Yeah. I, I suppose, you know, we'll talk about that a bit later, but I suppose once you get proper pathways and systems in place, then it will become a bit more different than it is now. But, uh, yeah, uh, I couldn't agree more. Cricket is, once you understand it, it's quite easy to understand uh, all the nuances and how the game works. But, you know, to someone who's coming into it pretty much blind and, and don't know much about it, it can be confusing. But really, yeah, all you need to do is just stand there and just try and swing a bat and hit a ball. And then as a bowler, run up a few paces and bowl and in the field, <laughs> run side to side a few Ks. And then that's it, really. Um, yeah, I always cricket, say it's, it's as complicated as you want to make it. It can yeah, be a very right. simple game. Yeah. And, and I'm sure people at Estonia are, are working that out as they, as they learn the game and say, oh, it's, you know what, it's quite easier than I, you know, first thought. I thought it was always going to be complicated. But uh, that's fantastic to hear uh, about your cricketing journeys and, and what you're doing in Estonia in terms of, of that and how you came into the game, which is Fantastic. Um, so, David and, and Ragnar, I thought to start this interview off, uh, I thought we'd talk about the history of cricket in Estonia because you can learn a lot about cricket from its history. And the history of cricket in Estonia is quite interesting, but I was reading up about it in preparation for our chat. Uh, certain facts popped, popped into my mind um, that I thought, hang on, is that true or that's false? We, and you'll share some of that in a minute, but uh, it's it's quite interesting how it became to be a sport in Estonia. So, so David Ragnar, if you can give us a brief overview on the history of cricket in Estonia. Um, yeah, um, so it started uh, in the late nineties. Uh, obviously, neither of us were involved back then, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I know a few that, that were, um, and from what they've told me, there was an Estonian businessman who went to Australia and uh, fell in love with the game, and when he came back, he thought, I need to get cricket being played in Estonia. So he, he went to the obvious place, an Indian restaurant, <laughs> and uh, talked to the owner and said, I'll get a team together, you get a team together, let's have a game of cricket. And that's kind of where it started. They played on a, a football field. Uh, no one knows, no one remembers the result, but that was the first game of cricket. Um, and and they continued to play uh, for a few years until they moved into the, the Hippodrome, which became sort of the the centre of cricket in Estonia in the middle of a horse racing track. And they had to stop games every time a race was on and huh. and uh, things like that. Uh, they had uh, a lot of uh, English expats then playing uh, in the team, but they also had started to get a few Estonians involved as well. Uh, and then they basically set up for touring sites to come and, and play against their team. So between... Uh, 2005 and 2006, I think they had 40 teams come over and play in Estonia. Uh, the MCC came over and played against them. The Lord's Taverners came over. Um, you know, it was really thriving in that time. Um, and then in 2003, the official association was formed. Uh, so we celebrated our 20th anniversary last year. Uh, 2007, they had the first domestic league. It was uh, four teams, and uh, that continued through to 2013, I think. Uh, at 2008, they became ICC members. They hosted the 2012 Division Three ICC European tournament which they won at, Hippodrome. at the Hippodrome. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Shane Warne was the special guest uh, coach for Estonia that day. Shane Warne and Liz Hurley at the Hippodrome watching cricket. Don't know that anyone would believe that. Uh, in 2013 the, the league was sort of relaunched as the Estonian Premier League and that's when 
uh, things started really moving forward. Uh, we had uh, a schools program back then. We had uh, the first women's team back then. They, they travelled around Europe and, and played against teams like Italy and Netherlands and Gibraltar. Germany. Germany. <laughs> uh, and uh, started to get more natives involved through the schools program, some of which are still playing today. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the the volunteers sort of dried up and, and the schools and, and the women's sort of fell away, but the men started growing and growing and growing. And uh, by 2021, we had 11 teams uh, and... In the, men's. in the men's competition, yeah, but we didn't have any any women's. Uh, we moved to a new facility. Uh, the Hippodrome's being developed into apartments, so we had to find somewhere new to play. So we moved to uh, Tisco, which is just outside of Tallinn, to a purpose-built cricket field with a rugby field in the middle. Uh, fantastic facility. It will be even better once we get clubhouse and, and all the modern conveniences indoor hall thank you indoor hall yeah obviously <laughs> we can only play uh four months of the year outdoors in estonia so indoor well, we're stretching it into five we're trying to get to five but indoor <laughs> cricket is very important for yeah. for us uh 2021 we became a member of the estonian olympic committee which was a big deal for us we've been trying to get there for a long time we also played our first t20i matches uh, against Cyprus. 2022, we had our first women's league. The women were back and going really well. Uh, we played in our first World Cup qualifiers. We didn't win a game, but we <laughs> played. <laughs> <laughs> and then last year, our first women's T20 international. So the growth has just been fairly consistent since about 2018. It's just getting bigger and bigger every year. Yeah. Yeah. Um good to hear about how it all became to be um, cricket in Estonia. And the, thank you for that brief overview of the history of it, David. Um, sort of sad that it's not being played at the Hippodrome anymore. That's been really Yeah, it's sad for a lot of us, but unfortunately uh, we don't have enough money to <laughs> fight with the developers. Yeah. Oh, well, well, at least you've got some records and photos of, Absolutely. cricket being played there so that's the main thing i suppose that people can look back on um but yeah I, I think people listening and watching this episode will definitely learn a lot about <clears throat> excuse me about how cricket became a thing in estonia and now it's certainly come a long way since the early days as you mentioned till now uh which is fantastic good to see that development and growth and we'll talk about that a bit later on and in our chat uh, but but thank you david for that uh, brief overview on the history of cricket in estonia um certainly learned a lot from just listening to you there uh which is fantastic uh david and ragnar I, I thought we'd talk about the estonia national cricket teams uh the, the women's and the men's and be good to gain your insights on the two teams and learn more about their achievements the players stories uh, because many of the players come from diverse backgrounds so many of them um, and it would be good to, to gain your insights on, on the two teams and how they're going and tracking along. Um, so, David and Ragnar, for those who may not know a lot about the Estonia women's and men's teams, can you tell us more about them, the players, and, and some of their stories? You want to start with the men? Yeah, sure. Um, the men's team is uh, very, I'd say, diverse. Uh, we have players from uh, Australia, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Estonia, of course. Uh, Australia. I said Australia. Oh, you did say <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's a bit of a, a, a melting pot of uh, different cricket ideas and cricket cultures, which is really always interesting in, to get together in one team. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a, a very experienced coach, Richard Cox, uh, from England, who comes over and works with us and sort of... Uh, makes it all work uh but yeah this this team has been together since like i said uh, 2021 uh but previously before that we we've we still played 
uh, international matches, but they weren't recognised. Uh, they didn't have ICC status uh, for some time. Uh, so there, there has been international cricket played. It just hasn't been official international cricket. Um, we've played uh, Baltic Cup between ourselves, Latvia and Lithuania for going back to 2008 or 2009, I think. So there's there's a long history there of, of playing against those teams. And I, uh, Iceland joined Iceland came year. over last year, which was their, their good good fun, the Icelandic boys. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we're, we're, we're improving a lot. I think uh, having weekly trainings now and, and fitness sessions and just, having the group together more often and, and playing as much cricket as we can. I think you can see the improvement in the results over the last few years. And, you know, we got our first C20I win against Gibraltar last year and hopefully we'll get a few more this year. Yep. And uh, we have a big calendar this year with World Cup qualifiers in, in Guernsey in August. Um, but we're also going to Cyprus to play a series there. Uh I think we have Malta coming coming here as well. So there's there's a lot going on. Um, and then obviously the European Cricket Championships later in the year as well. So I think we've got a group of 24 now in the squad and I think we'll probably use all of them over the next few months. Yeah. Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, good to hear about that, about the men's team. Um, you know, do you have any younger players in the team people in their 20s and mid 20s and 30s yeah. give us a bit of an age yeah sort of it, it's it's range. like a lot of teams in europe it's it's a bit old um <laughs> but we we do have uh, a young a young spinner uh syed eftikar uh he has a lot of talent um and really excited to see him playing more games for the national team he played uh, in our T10 series in Sweden last year and, and looked really dangerous and we just need to back him up, up, up a bit more with our catching and, and fielding. Yeah. Um, oh, I, I, uh, Savio is another one. Yeah. Uh, he's he's come onto the scene lately and he's getting stronger and stronger every year. His bowling's improving really a lot each time he plays and he listens a lot and he learns a lot. So I think those two are, are really exciting looking forward and and we have a young uh estonian his, his dad's english his mum's estonian named henry who's uh not in the national squad yet but he's uh playing in the first division for the men's cricket at, at 13 14 so there's a there is definitely some some uh, young potential coming through as well yeah that's what's the, what's the youngest in national team so yeah, it would be the youngest. What's the age uh, number? 23, the 23 maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for, for sharing that because um, <laughs> it's good to see that the youngsters are coming through. That That's where your talent and future lies, as you said, which is generally the case, uh, case across the board in Europe. Mm. With associate nations, they do have a lot of older players in their 40s and uh, who just... <laughs> 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 They're like yourself, David. Uh, you know, age is not a, age is a number. You know, you're still 21 inside. Uh, just have to have that mentality. Um, so, you know, but it's good to see, you know, younger people emerging from the pathways and the systems and uh, making their way forward in in the um, in their team um, in these associate countries, which is fantastic. Um, in terms of for the men's side, uh, what are the plans? in the years to come in terms of tournaments, but you've mentioned that a little bit there, but also T20 World Cup, that being expanded now um, to give more opportunities to associate nations, which is fantastic by the ICC. And that's certainly a, uh, definitely a, a goal and ambition, I'm sure, that you have as a, as a team to get there. Do you think that you will eventually get to a T20 World Cup in, in the years to come, or do you think... There's still a long way to go. We, we've we got to take it steady. I think with a, a country that's, what, 1.4 million people. Oh, you're, you're flattering us. 1.3 million people. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and where cricket is still a novelty rather than an established sport, I don't think we want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, 
we have big plans for for the schools and and the kids and and that pathway and that's my hope is that in in 10 years maybe we see that really start to pay off we've got people that have been playing cricket for for a decade uh that can really show what estonia can do um I mean, we're, we're going to World Cup qualifiers in Guernsey, hopeful that we can cause some upsets, absolutely. But uh, I think we have to be realistic as well that there's some very strong teams in there and, and it's, uh, it's a big ask. Uh, but we'll do our best and we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah. certainly I think long term to have a, a Estonian native heavy team that can go and take on those teams is the plan absolutely and, and hopefully you can achieve that which i think you definitely will um just hearing what, what you're saying and there's all good stuff coming out so it's fantastic to hear uh, ragnar with the women's team of course um they've only played just the one women's t20 national uh last year which was against norway uh hopefully many more to come um so we we can't really based off those stats we can't really add to that but for the women's team tell us about their journey uh some of the players involved their backgrounds uh, where they come from uh how they got into playing cricket um so if you'd like to share that with us um about the women's team so the current uh, women's national team was formed in 2021 again as the men's prior to that we have right now around five players who played before the 2021 team and um, we're happy to have them they're all Estonians but we have a mixed bag as well on on a women's team there are more Estonians than on the men I think we have now over 10 women on our team I guess our you know more the stats like <laughs> the, how many of us are there yeah but yeah, ladies are playing from Sri Lanka, India. Uh, also, we have European ladies from Ukraine, Belarus, Latvia. Latvia. Yes, we have uh, Australians in our training uh, squad, and also obviously a lot of Estonians. Interestingly enough, we have two pairs of mums and daughters. Uh, one, one of them, daughter is like 15 just now, so qualified to be on ICC Games. And the other one is barely 18. The young Victoria Frey, who's a really promising player, one of the strongest, if not the strongest player on the national team. She's the fast bowler who might do step back a little to keep. <laughs> <laughs> but the other students who played in the prior net, women's team uh, they, they're good as well and they're coming back and honing but with the ladies we do lose good late good women to motherhood yeah but if they're keen they're right back <laughs> <laughs> so our training sometimes looks like uh, they have like kindergarten on the side <laughs> but it's good because one couple is both men's and women's team so yeah men train mom takes care and then that takes over yeah. so it's cool to see that well I yeah the train yeah yeah and, and then what else like men we train weekly we do have the fitness sessions and uh because there are only two domestic uh, clubs playing for ladies before every weekend game we have our session for the national team ladies to practice and this year i mean previously this squad has played finland norway malta that's it yes yeah. we do have venus cup as well uh, which with this squad we started off with softball in request of the finland and then we moved on this summer to hardball which we were really happy to do. We hosted them yeah. here and then went on to a Nordic Cup, which we're really proud to be part of, where we did play our first T20Is against Norway. It went how it went. 
Uh, but yeah, this year we're gonna play Norway again. In, we're gonna go to Norway to play them. I assume Finland's gonna be there. I don't know the exact if we get to play Denmark or Sweden. Sure. I hope. Oh, I hope. Uh, the closest game to the ladies is Gibraltar in April. Three games, T20 eyes. <laughs> and then we go to Cyprus with the guys as well. And that's going to be a hard weekend of 10 games, I think. <laughs> so hmm. it's a yeah, lot of work this couple yeah. of season. <laughs> that's fantastic. Great to, great to hear that. Um, yeah. it, I suppose that's life you know people have families and you know have to you know deal with that and bring a family up but i suppose that's a good thing in a way as you mentioned get the kids involved from a young age about playing cricket get a bat and a ball in their hands <laughs> which is how you're gonna uh, grow and develop the sport in estonia which is fantastic uh, good to good to hear that good to hear that it's a, a nice enjoyable happy environment for both the women's and the men's team, um, and they want to get better and improve. Um, have you noticed that more women are interested in cricket or any other sport in Estonia? Is women's cricket or sport popular um, in Estonia? I can't answer that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, it's, well, it's, 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 still, it's still a tough sell. Let's yeah. put it that way. Um, Recruitment is hard, but uh, we just have to keep at it and be consistent. And, uh, you know, generally, I think they either come along and they love it and they're, they're there for, for life or it's not for them. So um, we just, it's just numbers. Once we, we get enough through the door, I think we'll reach that tipping point. The word of mouth will start going around. But at this point, it's very early in the in the women's league and the domestic club, so it's it's still a, a hard slog to to recruit the the women's side. Yeah, well, I can understand that. Um, it's going to take time, and um, you have to build up steadily uh, towards these things, I I suppose. Um, but um, is there a big big commitment to to really promote? women's cricket given what's happened to other countries around the world with women's sport but also yeah. cricket as well absolutely like, we're uh, we're uh this weekend actually we're starting our uh, uh introduction to cricket program we run uh, four week four weeks in Tallinn and four weeks in tartu which is the second biggest city in estonia uh it's the first time we're running programs in tartu so we're trying to expand uh into the second city there and uh We'll be doing that prior to the, the outdoor season and then we'll do another bunch of sessions after the outdoor season to try and get some more uh, people interested when we head into the indoor games. So uh, I think that's our main uh, program for, for getting more women involved is to make these available and to promote them and, and hopefully uh, we get a good number of uh, people turn up and we can direct them into the domestic clubs and get them playing cricket weekly. Yeah, abs absolutely. Or, more, the more the merrier. One thing to yeah. add on this is that in Estonia, we do recruit more during winter season mm. because we have such a short summer. Yeah. It's harder to get the Estonians to come and give away their weekends to do something that they're not yet in love with. Yeah. So, but in, in the winter, oh, it's still dark outside, fine. I'll go do something in the gymnasium, you know? So that's right now we're, why we are committing so much during yeah, indoor season. Yeah. yeah, no, that's it's great to hear about how the women's team and the men's team are growing and developing as teams and getting better and wanting to learn more and improve and wanting to play more international cricket uh, with other countries have other countries have come to you and say yeah we want to play more against you in terms of the women's and the men's um, just tell yeah. us about that. 
Yeah. But sometimes we're too afraid. I'm like, Spain, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> we, we, we do, yeah, we do get a few approaches from countries where we're like, oh, I don't think we're ready for that one quite yet. But uh, obviously it's a, it's a lot of investment of, of money and time for, for all of the players to, to do these things. So we want to make sure that both us and the players are getting value out of any series that we plan. So um, it's a balancing act between we want to do as much as we can, but we know these guys have jobs, they have lives, they have families. So, you know, it's, it's finding that balance, what's too much, what's not enough, and and accepting the right teams to play against that are going to give us a challenge but not just be potentially a waste of time for us. Yeah, that's that's understandable. Uh, but it's good to see other countries are approaching and wanting to to play against Estonia a bit more, which is fantastic. And you and you see that in the associate world, a lot of countries want to help each other out. So that's fantastic. Um, are you optimistic about the the future of both teams? And and obviously in the years to come, once you establish better facilities, systems, and pathways, and getting the talent through, do you think that both teams are going to be prosperous and have success long term? Absolutely. I think uh, the improvement over the last couple of years uh, in both teams has been pretty easy to see. Uh, and that's just from playing more cricket together. And I think the next few years, you'll see both of the teams are starting to get, they know their games, they understand their strength and their weaknesses a bit better and they they play a bit smarter rather than enthusiasm being the driving force. They they get a bit smarter about the cricket. And I think having people like Richard Cox involved, he's a great thinker of the game and, and he's uh, very good at sort of laying out what we should do rather than what we want to do and things like that. Yeah. So I think that's the, 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 the side of the game that's going to improve the most over the next few years. And I think, there's a lot of uh, ability in, in both teams. Um, and if we can put together a more total game, uh, I think we can surprise a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, everyone, watch out Estonia in the, in the years to come. They're going to be the, uh, the, the underdogs of international cricket and, and they're going to cause some upsets along the way. But it's wonderful to hear your uh insights on both the women's and the men's team and, and i'm sure many people would pick up a lot just from listening to you about that and understanding how the teams go about their business and the players and and uh it's 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 fantastic to to know that both teams and the players in, involved um want to uh get better and improve and and, and represent Estonia, because you're playing international cricket for your country, and that's the highest honour you can have uh, for any athlete in any sport. Um, to to have that opportunity is a great thing for for all these players on the women's and men's side. So, so I think everyone here would would agree with me and say we wish the teams all the best success in the years to come, and hope you keep growing and developing um, and getting better and rise through the ranks of associate cricket because you know as many associate teams know that the path to the top is the difficult one to to get to so uh but you've already made good headway and uh, a good start but there's a lot of hard work still to come but there's a lot of passionate people like yourself Ragnar and uh, David who are passionate and, and want what's best for the sport and who are doing what you can um to to help that so I think everyone wishes all all the best and, and hope that uh, we see Estonia a bit more in international cricket playing against other associate countries in the near future. Um, so let's hope that's that's the case going forward. But but thank you for sharing those insights on the teams. Um, I thought, David and Ragnar, we talk about the growth and development of cricket within Estonia in terms of getting cricket into local communities, clubs, schools, grassroots, etc., and David and Ragnar, you would agree that this is one of the biggest challenges that many associate countries face around the world is how do you introduce and promote cricket into a country that's not familiar with it? That's easier said than done. And we've already talked a little bit about that throughout our chat today. 
uh, about some of those challenges and difficulties. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure the association has asked these questions themselves, but how do you try and introduce cricket into the community? How do you try establish grassroots cricket and local cricket clubs and local communities? Competitions, pathway systems, underage comps, etc. having facilities, and that's the biggest challenge is having access to nets, grounds that have turf wickets. Uh, most of the time you play on artificial or you play an indoor, uh, which is not really developing your skills because when you play international cricket, it's usually on turf and that's a different variable to uh, synthetic, which is consistent, whereas turf is un inconsistent. So facilities like that and making that accessible to people in their local communities as well. You know, where can I go and train to play cricket? Like in many countries, like in Australia, you can walk to your local park and there's a cricket net. But in Estonia and other countries, you don't have that. So how do you try and get that into the community? And how do you make cricket accessible to people to watch? If the national team's playing a game, how do you make that accessible on TV or the internet or YouTube? Um, and getting cricket into schools and in their programs in Ragnar, you you're a part of that, so you'll tell us a bit more about that. Um, so a lot of questions that you have to ask yourself as a, an associate cricket country and a board, um, and uh, usually they're straightforward. Others are quite difficult to have an answer and solution to. So David Aragna, what other challenges does the Estonia Cricket Association have in trying to grow and develop cricket in the Estonian community and do you see cricket becoming a mainstream sport in Estonia anytime soon? Well I think the you, you touched on facilities that's obviously a, a big challenge in a, a country like this. Uh, a cricket field is a very big place people who are used to football fields so when you go to a, a local council and say, I need this much land for a cricket field, they kind of look at you like you're a bit strange. Um, <laughs> we currently have only the two cricket grounds in Estonia. Uh, so at the capital yep, in Tallinn, <laughs> we're, we're very keen to, to get one or two grounds in Tartu to start our expansion plans down there. And deal with Tartu is that it's a university city. So it has a lot of youngsters and also foreigners coming in who already know the game, but we want to push Tartu so they already who know the game can go and play in hopes of yep. getting more Estonians to do it. So that's why it's such a big commitment. We, we do already have two clubs that are based in Tartu and travel two hours up to Tallinn to play their cricket. So, uh, there's obviously an appetite for it there. And I think if we can get some facilities there, it will grow pretty quickly. Uh, oh, an association. But, <laughs> but, but indoor is where we really uh, need to invest and, and get some facilities going because obviously our winters are very long and, and it is our main recruitment window. Uh, we have plans at, at Tiskra at our national cricket grounds to, to have an indoor centre there as well. So it can be sort of a 365-day-a-year cricket facility. Uh, and hopefully we can do the same thing down in Tartu. And that means when we, we go and run these programs, there's somewhere for it to, to progress to. Um, it's, it's a big challenge at the moment because obviously we have to go to a school and book a hall or, or find a sports facility and yeah. we can only get it for this amount of time on this day and that day. So you sort of uh, have to arrange yourself around them. I'm, I'm longing for the day where I can do what I want when I want. Yeah. And the yeah. facilities that are keen for us to come in with a cricket hardball are sometimes not suitable they have open spaces so it's 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 not meant our current <laughs> facilities that we could use are not meant for cricket yeah it's not in a safe way so that puts a stop to mm. us Just, having constant trainings yeah. for even clubs yeah. but national luckily is covered <laughs> but then then you know if we move past the facilities then you're 
you come up against this this idea that cricket is for foreigners. Yeah. So it's a very hard one to sort of break down, and this is what we're trying to do with the school program is to to get the kids before they form that idea, you know, and 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 that they can bring it home with them and and spread the word, and if we can long term if we can get every kid the opportunity to try cricket in school that's when it becomes a mainstream sport that's when it's not just something that you hear about but you don't see so that's obviously the main long-term goal is to get into as many schools as we can and have as many kids in estonia playing cricket as part of their regular school sports program yeah um and Ragnar, you can add to that because you're a part of the school's program. You do some coaching there with the kids. Uh, so tell us a bit more about that and the impact that cricket is having on kids in Estonia playing cricket in school. Tell us about that. Obviously, we can't right away tell them like, oh, it's 11 aside, da, da, da. so we play mod modified cricket in the beginning with them. Uh, what is it, continuous for Australians? <laughs> <laughs> And they do enjoy the hitting. It's like because that's the explosive part, you know. But once they get more skill in, and they're like, "Oh, I can get them out," then they start to have the enjoy in that. So a little bit of competitiveness as well. Um, I'm trying to come back to your question, but I already forgot. <laughs> what that's could right. I say about on that topic? kids well well what last are year, they enthusiastic do they love yeah. cricket when you teach cricket to them yeah do they want to learn more yes some definitely i mean with, with everybody if there's this like if they like it or not but as we said estonia is such a small country even if you get like oh they're interesting in, interested in the in the game will they stay with the game so that's my job to make it interesting for them. But uh, I do have the opportunities because it's smaller classes for me. I have like around four classes every week. And I do show them like, oh, that, that's actually how you bat. And that one, one girl last, last week just like, oh, why do you tap while you bat on the ground? I'm like, let's talk about backswing. <laughs> you are asking for it, I yeah. tell you. Yeah. So there are some. But working on it, it will get more and more into them. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's fantastic to hear <laughs> yeah. about. No, no, that was a pretty good answer. Um, <laughs> no, but it's good to good to know that the kids want to learn more and uh, are curious. And you got to make cricket interesting for young kids, otherwise they don't want to go back and do it because because uh, many people think, oh, in cricket you don't really do much. You just stand in the field and you don't really get a bat or a ball in most games as it is mm. so you have to try and make everyone feel you know a part of the game get them involved like have everyone bat and then have everyone bowl have everyone field and keep wicket if you want to do that um so it's about that engagement really which is the word that we were looking for there the engagement and trying to get them involved and um are many of the schools that you introduce the programs to are they uh, you know the the people who are in charge of the schools uh, are they keen on cricket or they just say eh, you know we'll have a go and and see what it can do so what's well, the response a, been like yeah it's a mixed bag obviously it's hard to get into some of the schools when they are yeah. resistant like no we do our volleyball and football and we don't want like, yeah you can't be here doing our job for free you know <laughs> but the schools that we do get into, uh, there are some who are really keen and welcome us back. Uh, we do try to provide some schools who are more keen with them set so they could actually do these things during their PE or pieces. So they would have the day-to-day -day access to cricket. Because yep. they do play kind of baseball type of games in PE lessons, not really, but they do have a, some bat to hit the ball, you know. Yeah. So just 
we need to find more keen PE teachers and uh, well, there's a there's a couple of schools from last year that are yeah. working with us this year on on expanding the cricket program with their schools and and working towards a school-based tournament later in the year so there, there has been some uptake um and it's just i think fine like she said but finding more more schools like that you just have to keep at it and and they'll come along every now and then and the more we get the more they spread the word of how good cricket is to maybe the schools that aren't really sure about it and yeah. eventually and we'll get there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, eventually it will uh, kick on and, and everyone will Everybody be will do cricket in PE lessons. Yeah. I'm out of my favourite time in PE, <laughs> playing cricket. I was looking forward to when we played cricket in PE. I was like, yes, playing cricket. So that was always fun growing up. Um, so no doubt it will be the same for the kids as well in school. Um, do you think that with cricket being in the Olympics now, in 2028 and governments and uh, Olympic bodies in many different countries in the associate world, like Estonia, you mentioned that before, you're a part of that now, the Olympic body and movement. Do you feel like that you're, that's a good thing for Estonia cricket right now to get that extra funding and, and money, even though you probably won't make it to the Olympics and play in the tournament, but having that backing and, and funding uh has it come at a right time for you guys uh it's probably a two-part answer um you can correct me if i'm wrong about this but okay. uh the estonian olympic committee uh it has a lot to do with school programs is that correct wait what how would i know that okay I, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> as far as i know that a lot of the schools uh stuff the Olympic Committee has a lot to do with, so that helps us yeah. uh, with access to things like that. Uh, in terms of funding, uh, we have a few boxes we have to tick before we get access to that, so we're working on that. Um, but it's certainly something that uh, it's going to help a lot. Uh, a lot of that is to do with paying officials and coaches goes through through the funding through them. So once we get access to that. Uh, that obviously redirects some funds that we can use elsewhere. Uh, and it means that there's a professional pathway to, to being a cricket coach in Estonia, which at the moment there isn't. Yeah. 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 But I'm just hoping that they do broadcast uh, cricket on Estonian networks as well when it happens. It's unlikely that Estonia Broadcast Centre would buy that game in. And you know, yeah. it would be great to play on national TV, if you're watching TV, you're supposed to watch, not so poster, because only cricket is on from the Olympics. It would be great. Yeah, no, it would. Because <laughs> uh, I've asked this question to many people I've interviewed in the series from the associate world, and they all say the same thing. It's going to do wonders for associate cricket, and it's going to benefit more associate countries than the full members, obviously, uh, which, is, which is good to hear. And Obviously, every country likes to be in the Olympics. You know, if you can win a gold medal, then why not? We'll put everything back you, um, put in the money and the funding and see what you do. Uh, and no different. I think it's the same in Estonia. They, they're pretty keen on their Olympic sports. Uh, I've seen a few athletes from Estonia over the years and they often win gold medals. and More and, on the Winter Olympics than the summer. In the Winter Olympics but... more so than summer. Because I get both the, bits here and there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we just need to have cricket in sort of a winter form, then you'll be all right. <laughs> uh, you'll win the gold medal. Um, and they have played cricket on the ice, I think, mm. in Switzerland. Maybe. Well, we, we actually had an ice cricket uh, tournament in the 90s uh, in Estonia. Had some English teams come over and play. There's a video on YouTube that looks very old, but uh it, it has happened here uh i think doesn't mean we'd be any good at it but uh we'd give it a go <laughs> yeah no definitely we we just need to find a way for cricket to work on the ice um we could sort of being in there they're quite good oh yeah they just yeah. 
cross-country skiing uh, marathon over the weekend. Mm. So Estonians weirdly love to ski. Not me. Yeah. No mountains <laughs> love skiing. No mountains, exactly. <laughs> Black. Yeah, I tried skiing once in New Zealand for a holiday. And uh, that was okay at it, but not the greatest. Um, so, yeah, maybe it could work. Maybe get some <laughs> some skis and try and work out how to bowl. How are you going to bat? Uh, probably use the uh, the pick of the ski and swing with that or something. Or I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure our, our ice cricket tournament was a lot more about drinking than playing cricket. Oh, but... yes. Uh, yeah, well, it would be great to do that or something. Mm. But I did know that they did try that in uh, Switzerland, I think. Yeah, they just, it was just on, just on recently, the, the latest. Yes, yes, yeah. so they always have a game there. So they make yeah, it work. snow's a bit more reliable than ours, unfortunately. Yeah. We, uh, if, we, if we planned a weekend, there'd invariably be no snow. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, it's, it's quite a nice backdrop. In, um, mm. Yeah, we don't have the Alps either. Yeah, there's, I'm not sure about it in Estonia, but I'm sure Estonia has some iconic scenic places do they if you like flat things <laughs> <laughs> it's not a mountainous country a lot of forests it's, it's one of the flattest countries on earth <laughs> oh well <clears throat> well as i said we'll try and make it work and get cricket in the winter olympics for estonia that'll be that'll be pretty epic i think <laughs> fingers crossed ioc if you're listening <laughs> you, know, you know you could have cricket's a summer sport but it could be a winter sport as well yeah, well, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, we've dripped, drifted off. Let's drifted get back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> talking about getting cricket in the... That, that's that, that's probably a good topic to discuss on the podcast. Can cricket become a Winter Olympic sport? Winter, Winter sport in general, you know? Yeah. We, we'd, we'd finally be, <laughs> be ahead of the other countries for training. Yes, yes you would be. You'll be the pioneers. You'll be mm. like... Championing this, yes. Running in the snow, <laughs> like <laughs> knee high. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but then the yeah. ball would roll for four. Mm. <laughs> ball would get lost in the snow. Oh, you probably have to use a snowball or something <laughs> as a cricket ball. It, it needs um, work as a concept. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It needs yeah. work as a concept. And how are you going to do with the stumps? So we we'll just mold them into snow and put the bales on top. There you go. Nice. There's your stumps. Metal. Metal. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Very straightforward. <laughs> you know, you've got to layer up, uh, you know. So, Not really? Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you stand there, just batters <laughs> would be fine. They're running all the time. Uh, well, uh, we, we've started something here. Um, <laughs> yes. And uh, we're drifting away, so let's get back on course. Let's get back on track uh, and talk about the growth and development of cricket in Estonia as we were discussing before. Um, so with that being said, with the Olympics and all that funding and money, how does it come to dealing with the ICC? Now, I've asked this question to many of people involved in associate cricket about the ICC and dealing with them. Uh, obviously, it's no secret that many people think the ICC can do better when it comes to supporting associate countries and govern the game of cricket properly, um, which you hear all the time from cricket fans and people within uh, administrative circles. But from your perspective with the ICC, tell us a, a little bit about your relationship with them. Have they been very helpful and wanting to, to help out when it comes to uh, the game in Estonia? Have you had good relationships with them? I think it's uh, one of those relationships where I think both sides have the best intentions. They both are trying, but I think sometimes the hands are tied a little uh, and and you can't get the outcomes you want. But uh, in general, the ICC Europe office is is there for us whenever we need them. They, they're uh, as helpful as they can be, and, and that's, I think, all we can ask from them. Um, I'd love to see some more funding for associate nations. I think um, <clears throat> we're lucky that we have some generous sponsors that allow us to, to do more than a lot of countries have the ability to do. And 
I, I'd, I'd love to see the ICC step up the funding a bit for some of the smaller countries because it's it's impossible to to do things if you don't have money. Yeah, that's that's right. Um, you need money to do things, and especially in cricket, you need need that because you need facilities, equipment, and all all that stuff. Um, which brings me on to my other question that I had in terms of equipment and and all that. You know, helmets, pads, balls, stumps, any cricket paraphernalia that you need uh, to play a game of cricket. Um, have you had uh, companies that have come on and have sponsored you or provided you with uh, equipment to use? Has anyone approached you on that? We we uh, order most of our stuff from Grey Nichols um, yeah. and we get uh, trade prices, so we get a, a good discount. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we, we've talked to a few other companies, but... If it's outside of Europe, the shipping just kills us. Um, yeah. So Brexit really hurt because it suddenly cut all of those English companies, made it so much harder to get stuff, more expensive to get stuff. Yeah, I can um, imagine. So still sort of on the lookout for, for something a bit more European that, that can do the job, but at the moment there's not really... A lot of options and and we do end up generally going back to gray nickels to get most of our stuff um we have uh well we have plans for a cricket shop in in our clubhouse once it gets built but that's got to get built first so we'll see how long that takes um we just there was a there was a lot of problems uh coming out of COVID, obviously, with a lot of the Indian factories being shut down for a long time. And, yeah, and yeah. so you couldn't get even Grey Nichols was out of stock of just about everything. Yeah. Um, we had, we, we were trying to get our hands on on plastic cricket kits to because we were just about out of the supply we got in about 2010. So we needed to replenish the stocks. Um, but it was just impossible. The ICC stepped up and, and created uh, a program with stuff coming from Australia, but again, it was more expensive to ship it than it cost for the yeah. actual products. Um, so that wasn't ideal, but it was you know the best we could get at the time. So it's a constantly shifting uh, landscape of trying to work out where the best value is. Uh, we just uh, got a contact from uh, Chris Pierce in the Czech Republic. Uh, for a guy in India who made us some plastic cricket bats that we're going to be uh, giving out to everyone that attends our intro session so that they can take them home and show their friends and show them what cricket's about. So uh, now we've got that contact in India that can make us some some plastic sets if we need them. And, and it's just, yeah, trying to find that one place in Europe that can do it all one day. Maybe it will exist, but at the moment it doesn't. Yeah, not ideal. Yeah. We have Bradley donate us some balls as yeah. well, especially yeah. for the ladies. Pink yeah. ones. I mean, they're more reddish, but sure pink. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, yeah. nice of Binger to do that. Yes. Yeah, he uh, has a relationship with one of our major sponsors. So he, he was over here uh, last year and the year before. and For the qualifiers? Yeah, uh, yeah he, he you can see a video of him doing some coaching in Estonia once. Yes. On yeah, yeah. So that was interesting. We were, we were actually in Finland for the World Cup qualifiers with the men's mm. team, and he he came over to Finland for for a day to to hang out with the men's team and give them some some advice and tips and 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 support. And then uh, myself and and Stu Hook, who was playing in the qualifiers, and uh, was the president of the association at that time. We we raced back to Estonia on, on a rest day with Brett and organised a, a training session with uh, some Estonians and, and the, some of the women and and had about 100, 100 uh, players turn up to, to get a photo with him. And, and on a weekday. On a weekday, yeah. <laughs> I'm heard of in Estonia. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was amazing of him to, to give us his time and... and Really was exciting for everyone in Estonia to, and we we actually have a a young Estonian and uh, bowler who 
Binger was his hero. You know, he, he watched videos of cricket and he was like, I want to be like Brett Lee. So he, he steams in and runs as fast as he can. And for him to have, you know, half an hour with, with Binger to, to give him some tips and, and show him, uh, that was amazing. And, and he, he's actually now, we'd sort of, he had stopped playing and now he's now come back and played some games and getting back into cricket because of that. So it's, uh, yeah. yeah, it's amazing to have these guys give us some time and, and absolutely, you know, Brett Lee, or it's like that. they help us to get connections around the world to get more gears and yeah. stuff for us as well. Yeah. Well, no, it's, just shows what people can do in the cricketing community. You know, Brett Lee, one of the, you know, iconic names in Australian cricket with his fast bowling for many years, bowling at 160 kilometres, you get pulled over in a car if you do that. Uh, but on the cricket field, you know, it's it's good if you bowl fast. Not so good if you drive fast in your car, uh, but on a cricket field, it's, it's very good. And he was one of the best. So for him to take the time and do that is fantastic. And to make that kids day one you know watching brett on youtube and wanting to be him i'm sure he had a wonderful time um meeting his idol in in person um and i guess that's the same to all cricket fans i was lucky enough to meet shane warne and you know obviously i was no longer with us um, and as you can see behind me he signed his book cover and had a photo with him and and all that so it, it does mean a lot uh, when you do meet your idols in any sport, but in cricket, when you meet these guys like a Shane Warne or a Brett Lee, and you get to know them a little bit when you chat to them, they're good people, really. You know, they may be different on a cricket field, but off the field, they're very nice. And that's what I got from Shane. You know, everyone said he was gracious with his time, and he was. You know, he was, he was kind, he was nice, he always had time for everyone. So good to see Brett Lee helping out there. And, um, and doing that over there in Estonia and uh, wanting to help out, which is fantastic. No doubt a lot of a lot of people would have got a, a real enjoyment from seeing him. Um, in terms of coaching and all that stuff, developing coaches and, and that, because you need to have good systems for players to, to be involved in, and you need to have coaches to teach them the fundamentals and the basics of the game. So... How's the coaching situation like in, in terms of coaches getting ICC accreditation and all that stuff? Um, just talk to us, talk us through about the coaching when it comes to, uh, you know, that aspect of growth and development of cricket in Estonia. So we, uh, we had, I think, 12, 12 people get their ICC level one coaching last year. Uh, we had one Estonian uh, woman become an ICC coaching tutor, so she can actually run coaching uh, accreditation for us in Estonian. So that's amazing to have. Uh, and I mean, really, we were starting from a situation of having no coaches. So yeah. Uh, there was some ECB coaching uh, stuff done back in the early 2000s, and uh, some people were accredited in there, but since they didn't coach for so yeah. many years, it's no longer. So it, it's it's one of those things that there, there wasn't a lot of coaching going on, put it that way. Hmm. Uh, you had people training, but not in an organized way and, and not directed. Uh, so it is one of the challenges that we're trying to work on is to have each club eventually have a coach, someone that's gone through a set of training and, and can deliver coaching sessions to a certain standard. Uh, but it's obviously a, a, a long way to go. Um, and our focus at the moment is trying to get some more coaches that can go into schools and uh, deliver the, the schools program in Estonian. Um, but we offer the, the level one coaching course for anyone in, in our association that wants to do it. So it's always available. Uh, it's pretty new. So it's only been out for about a year, the, the level two we, we have 
our operations manager Terry O'Connor uh, got his level two coaching so we have uh, one of the first level two coaches in Europe um, but in order to get level two you need x amount of years on level one so if you can't get level one you can't get the experience so we had a lot of people waiting for this ICC level one to come along and now we've got uh, 10 or 12 people that will work over the next few years to get to that level two and hopefully there'll be people following them and and uh, all the clubs will start to get a more uh, established. established coaching and training sessions and and that can only improve the sound of cricket and uh, with hopefully kids coming through and more women getting involved it's really important that they have someone there that can coach them correctly yeah yeah and you mentioned Richard Cox before with the national team but he comes uh, over every couple of months uh, here and teaches us how to coach better so we have constantly the availability of that as well obviously having Terry O'Connor here who has coached as well for a long time so there's these pathways for us to go through it's a great yeah and they're, they're both working on a like a formal Estonian coach education program uh, that we can, that's one of the things we have to take to the Olympic committee and get that signed off. So um, that's being worked on. It's, it's all in, in, in progress at the moment. And hopefully over the next few years, it all becomes uh, a well-oiled machine and we start pumping out high quality coaches and yeah. improving the standard of cricket in general. Definitely, definitely, and it's good to good to hear that that that's on the way, and that's going to be uh, something to work towards and and get that established, which is fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so good to hear that. Also, the language barrier as well is difficult, especially if you have a coach coming in from an overseas country. It's often no, it's it's cricket in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a known language. It so is a known language. language. Yeah. But trying to communicate that with kids or people who grew up in Estonia and they only understand Estonian, then it can often be difficult. It's, you know, have a uh, feeling working... position. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, cricket is a general language you can understand mm. by actions, but you have to try and explain things in detail. Um, yeah, we actually have how a, that a, sort of um, sorry, barrier. We have a, like a glossary of uh, cricket terms that, that yes. Uh, Terry created and, and gave to a bunch of Estonians to sort of translate all of these cricket terms to have official cricket words in Estonian. And I think yeah. it's about 400 yeah. words. So uh, for now, now that I run sessions in Estonian with kids, I'm fully Estonian. Like overs, balls, why is everything square legs? Like that we had we didn't do that. <laughs> the fielding positions are like yeah. shots or something. Yeah. But I do it as much as I can in Estonian. Yeah. No, yeah, because that's often a, ch a challenge for many associate countries. If they do get some people who are from other countries coaching, it can often be a difficult challenge trying to coach. You know, yeah, it's about four tongue. Estonian words that, that <laughs> help me with. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I suppose that's probably the same. My next question. Uh, being an umpire myself, and I always like to see how the umpiring is going in these countries. Um, how's it going over over there in Estonia in terms of recruitment and making people want to become an umpire or a scorer, in fact, uh, to do those fundamentals uh, within the game, those basic roles that without a game of cricket you can't have an umpire or a scorer. You need those people. Uh, a lot of people volunteering, signing up wanting to do it or some people just say oh it's just too hard and you know what is this madness uh especially learning the laws and learning how to score properly so just talk us through about about that side of the of the game yeah so for for many years the system that we had here was that uh the teams provided umpires but you didn't umpire your own games you were uh told you had to umpire this game or this game um which is not an ideal system. And there was no training or accreditation or any of that. It was just, you know, it, it was just guys playing cricket and doing what they could with what they had. Uh, 
since uh, Terry has come on board, he is uh, he was an ECB uh, umpire tutor. He's now one of the first ICC umpire tutors. So we have had umpiring education courses every year for the last few years. Uh, we make it mandatory that each club has three umpires and three scorers that have done the courses. Uh, we're working towards a, a officials association, which I believe has just been formed. Uh, so that's on the way and working towards having more neutral umpires and, and an umpiring panel and, and things like that. Uh, last year was the first year we tried to do the neutral umpires and we obviously couldn't do it for every game, but when there were umpires available, we, we got the neutral umpires in as much as we could. And then whatever was left was shared between the teams. But I hope that, you know, as this moves forward, we get more people that sign up to be umpires and, and we do pay them. It's not a volunteer role they do get paid for their time so uh there's a few who are very into it and hopefully that grows and with the icc education now coming along uh it's a bit it's better that we can actually have accreditation now because previously even if we did the ecb courses they wouldn't accredit anyone outside of england so yeah. that meant that we we could do the courses but we weren't recognized at all so now we can get the ic accreditation so it's something the guys can have and say you know i've done this i've got my umpire accreditation if we host a t20i tournament or if we were lucky enough to get world cup qualifying tournament one year then our guys would be able to to get some experience doing that and and maybe then get offers to to work at other tournaments around europe um the ecn obviously is very big on on promoting and developing cricket around Europe. So they've also been supporting uh, umpires in the countries they go to. And, and uh, so there's there's a lot of opportunities for, for umpires at the moment, I think. And, and I think with our officials association coming along and, and the, having our own umpire tutor, it makes it very easy to, to train people and and get them up to, to scratch. And without uh, most of our matches being live streamed, it's easy also to, to look at, you know, maybe mistakes or how you could do things better and and use that as an educational tool as well. Yeah, fantastic. Good to hear about the umpiring situation and and that in Estonia. In Estonia. Um, it's a very important job in the game. Um, probably that's something that the MCC could think about, probably printing the law book in the local language. That's oh, that's a good idea. I just thought of that. Oh. We, we, we <laughs> translated no some of the ICC before. courses into Estonian and they tried the AI on it and it was utter cabbage. It's not that, that easy of a language, especially here in Europe. Languages are not that easy. Yeah, we, we offer the, the coaching and the... And the uh, just sorry just the coaching courses are all now translated into estonian even on the icc app you can do it in estonian uh but i don't think we would even attempt to do the umpiring one <laughs> well that that's probably something that the mcc could think about probably publishing uh the the laws of cricket in a, a particular language mm. which they haven't even thought about i'd love to see them try <laughs> At least give it a go. Yeah. Give it a go. Um, we'll mention it. it sense. Yes, it will make sense if that's because, you know, if, if you're learning the laws from a foreign country in the associate world, you can't read English, then it's obsolete. So you need to try and read something that's in the local dialect. So that's not a bad idea. I just thought about that on this episode. Uh, you know, you, you're always thinking about something that can better improve the game of cricket. That could probably improve the game of cricket is that you publish the law book in different languages. Uh, so it's good to know that the ICC are doing that, which is fantastic. Uh, another question I had is that the European Cricket League is 
in Europe, obviously, and we all have a great laugh from watching it because it's quite comical from time to time, like a clip that I saw the other day of someone hit a one-handed six twice, mm. Mm. which was pretty amazing. That's yeah. very hard to do. Um, and some other comical runouts in that for our entertainment. We all have a good laugh, but there's a, a reason uh, to grow and develop the game. Do uh, the teams from Estonia participate? Do some of the players participate in, in the leagues? Yeah, so we have uh, the European Cricket League, so the, the domestic European Championship coming up in Spain in the next few weeks, and we have the Talent Stallions from Estonia representing us uh, in that. Since they won their division. They won, they won our first division T20 last year, and the, the prize is you get to go and represent us uh, in Spain. Uh, I'll be going as their coach and hopefully won't, be forced to play. <laughs> um, but it's a great experience for these guys to, to get this reward for... Motivated the... to play even here on a rainy day, you know. Oh, no, 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 yeah. let us play. We'll, we'll also <laughs> be having our own series in May. So European Cricket Network is coming to Estonia and they'll be uh, we'll have two-week tournament here. So you'll be able to laugh at all the Estonians uh, making mistakes. And dropping catches and, and uh, getting their own wickets. Hey, <laughs> I didn't do it live. <laughs> uh, so has that happened to you, Ragnar, where you've <laughs> got out hit yes. wickets? So the club that I that we both uh, are in, we have a touring stuff happening once a year at least. And last year, the men took the ladies to uh, Croatia, please. And we were playing in a vineyard and wides were not really wide. So it was either a dot ball or hit a wide. And She's preferring her excuse. Never. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just hit a wide with a really big swing to that wicket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> you know, at least you've ticked that off the list now. Yes. What, what's say, the award that I got for that in our club? What's it called? Do you remember? Yeah. Okay. I, because of that, now for every club event, I have to wear a pink jacket, hence the hippos. Because our people are pink. Hippos are pink. That's oh. not normal. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the silly goose of the year, so. Uh, well, somebody else do something yeah. stupid. well, at least you've ticked that off the list. You can say, mm -hmm. I was out hit wicked in the game of cricket. Um, and um, <laughs> there are other weird ways of getting out in cricket. Uh, that's one of them. Um, yes, they need my diamond she, duck. She still wants a diamond duck. She's she's really oh, chasing diamond duck. Diamond duck. <laughs> yeah. Run out without facing a ball. Well, mm -hmm. some international cricketers have suffered that fate. Um, you day. ever been out for a golden duck or a duck? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Of course, <laughs> on national games, even <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> but I was, well, you took that. It all well. happened once, and I'm like, okay, once and done, no more. <laughs> Now it's just a diamond to go. I haven't done yeah. uh, obstructing a field as well. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe yeah. this year. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's the next one. Uh, <laughs> out obstructing the field or out handling the ball, which yeah, is rolling. Like, which one would I get a non-striker if I obstruct the field? Would I get a diamond duck or obstructing? Well, you could get uh, both at the same ah, time. Ah, it's both fun. If, yeah, if, yeah, because one is... If you're off strike the and they hit it and you pick yes, it up, yes, yes, you yes, can yes. get okay. both. Yeah. See, yeah. I'm, I'm still fun. learning the game. <laughs> well, well you, you're getting there and, um, you know, understanding these different scenarios and situations. Mm -hmm. um, and as an umpire, you have to fully understand that from my point of view. So what happens if this happens and all that stuff? You know, cricket's a very weird game. You know, you have very weird scenarios. What happens if a dog comes onto the field and grabs the ball in their mouth and it's going to the boundary? Is it four runs? So as an umpire, you assume that the ball was going to go to the boundary, so you award four runs, even though the dogs run off with the ball and you have to chase them back. But I did hear one yes, the four runs. Is it the dog yeah. or the bird? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's happened before in many games, but I did hear a story once that uh, many stories about that happening from, from people that, you know, even cows going on the field in England. Or horses. Or hippos. So, yeah, as I said, cricket's a weird game when it comes to all those different scenarios and, and all that. Um, that's why cricket's cricket. That's why it's unique in so many different ways. 
Um, so at least you've experienced those situations, Ragnar. Uh, hopefully not obstructing the field. You don't want to get out <laughs> by doing that. Um, so, We've had a domestic game, not an national. Yeah, well, well, another one hit the ball twice. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Kids uh, love to do that. <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, because they want to hit the ball. So mm -hmm. uh, they'll hit it twice, but you can't do that. Um, you can do that if you're defending your wicket. You can hit the yes, ball twice. Yes. But if you take a second strike, which is not defending your wicket, then you can be out if, a, if the fielding side appeals. Uh, which is also another important thing. You know, you've got to appeal for everything. And, you know, we've seen that in the past where uh, cricket teams don't don't appeal and they don't get a wicket. Uh, has that ever happened in, in the games that you've played? So for us, appeals just came last summer because we have so many who are still learning the game and on the women's side. And now we're, one of our great bowlers got an LBW. They celebrated and the, almost up to her like starting a new run up and then she turns um how was that <laughs> like <laughs> and yes it was given <laughs> she's like well, i think she didn't start the run up because cool. the appeal still valid up until the next ball the ball exactly. up the run up so, thankfully she was she not that because she's also one of the only umpires women umpires here in estonia <laughs> oh that, well that's very important we definitely though. missed a couple of uh dismissals <laughs> Yeah, there were a few games where I was umpiring with Terry where we're kind of looking at each other. Are they going to appeal? Are they going to appeal? No, yeah. they're not going to appeal. Yeah, yeah. Appeal. <laughs> it was like one umpire that I spoke to on the podcast he told me a story about that when I interviewed him. And um, it was for hit the ball twice and no one appealed. And he whispered to the bowler, well, you can't do that as an umpire, but he was sort of given a hint. He was like, appeal, appeal. You know, if you appeal, I can give it out. You, you, you can be given out, but no one appealed. <laughs> so it's that's the golden rule mm. for anyone listening. Uh, appeal. Just say, that how's that? Cool. Or yell or jump up and down, whatever, scream. Yeah, um, but it's also we're playing against friends, so we're like, yeah, you're still learning. You yeah, didn't yeah, know no. that you can't hit it twice. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that, that's all a part about the learning process, isn't it? About learning this, this game of cricket and how it operates in that. Um, so in terms of, well, we've drifted off track again, so let's get back to what we were talking about, um, growth and development. Um, uh, in terms of communities and, and local clubs, um, you've mentioned that there's quite a few domestic teams in Estonia and um, doing the research I did uh, quite a lot of interesting names and, and, you know, teams are called the Hippos, but they have a different name, uh, which is fascinating to, to, to read those names and to learn about that. Uh, so talk us through about the communities and these teams that these communities represent. Um, talk us about the growth and development from, from that aspect. Yeah, so we have... Uh quite a few clubs that are sort of based on cultural uh, background. background. So there's a big Bangladeshi community. Uh, we've got, I think, three three clubs that are sort of Bangladeshi based. Um, and they all sort of uh, started from one club and, and had an argument, so started another one and, and, and grew from that. Uh, we have now a few more clubs that are sort of getting past that and saying, well, let's actually try to put together a team that we think can can win games and, and win tournaments. So some people don't like that, but I think that's that's only good if we're getting better standard of cricket out of it. Um, you know, our, our club, the Hippos, is a bit more, you know, we'll take anyone and, and as long as we're enjoying ourselves and everyone's having a go, we're happy. Yeah, main um, language is English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So the Estonians coming along, they have to learn English and we get the Australian version. <laughs> um, yeah, as I said before, we've, we've now, so the Hippos was actually a, a joint between a joint venture between two clubs yeah. uh, who were sort of running out of players and, and didn't want to disappear. But we've both grown over the last few years to a point where we split up again. So the club that split off from us is now... Uh, Going to enter their own teams, and and they're very 
keen on promoting Estonian players. So there's there's quite a few new new players to cricket in that, and it's really exciting to see that and to see them actually playing real games of cricket is going to be really interesting because most of them have only played indoor cricket. So I'm really excited to see that. Uh, we spent a couple of years on a project to try and get uh, a NATO-based team because we have a, a NATO base uh, about an hour and a half away um, that have always sort of ummed and ahed about it. We never got it over the line. And 2021, we, we got them finally entering a team in the domestic competition. So we've got British soldiers coming down to the ground to, to play against our teams. And as they rotate every six months, it's a new team every time. So you never know, are they going to be really good? Are they going to be the same as us? Are they going to have really fast bowlers or, you know, it's, but they're not used to playing T20 cricket. They're used to playing, you know, 90 overs, 100 overs. So yeah. it takes them a while to adjust to the way that T20 is played. And so they're usually very strong by the end of the season, but if you hope you can get them at the start and get a few wins. <laughs> um, but it's great to see them coming on board and, and they've been coming back pretty much every year. So it's it's nice to see that community embracing what we're doing and they're, they're getting something out of it as well. So that's great to see. And now that we've got a couple of the clubs getting the women's teams involved as well, that's, I know from, from our club, it's, it's really built that community feeling that we have. And, and we've gone from about 20 members to about 50 members. So really growing the club and it's becoming more what, you know, me from Australia would feel like a cricket club is rather than yeah. just a, a, a group of friends that play cricket. We're actually becoming more of a, a proper cricket club and, and we can see that in a couple of the other clubs as well. So it is definitely growing and I think the biggest thing missing is the clubhouse, somewhere that after a game we can all get together and, and mix and, and have a drink or have something to eat and and chat about what's going on, what's going on in Put cricket. Put it bad in a game. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I think that's the one lacking factor in Estonian cricket right now yeah. is the, the, the lack of somewhere for the teams to interact a bit more. Yeah. And it's it's one of the great things about the national team is you've got team players from different clubs interacting that wouldn't otherwise. And, and it's really good to see that friendships being formed between clubs and and hopefully we can get this clubhouse built soon and and it can just build from that absolutely it's uh, good to hear that that uh, the community are embracing cricket and wanting to have that camaraderie ship and mateship as we say in australia um so it's good that you're trying to instill that into uh, the communities and the local teams there which is fantastic and it was great to hear both of your insights on the growth and development and the work that the association is doing and uh, what you are doing in terms of growing and developing the sport in Estonia. I think you should be very proud of yourselves and uh, you're doing some great stuff. And um, long may that continue and we can only hope that it will get better and, um, you know, we start to see that growth and development in the years to come. So it was good to hear your insights on that. Um well, David and Ragnar, we've reached the end of our discussion. We've got one more topic to talk about. Um, it's been enjoyable. I've enjoyed it immensely. I'm sure you have as well. And I'm sure everyone listening up until this point has enjoyed it as well, uh, learning about cricket in Estonia and um, the good work that you're doing there. Um, so for, for our last topic, I thought we talk about what the future holds for cricket in Estonia. It's very hard to predict the future, I know. It's very uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen in, in the future. But, David and Ragnar, how, how do you see Estonian cricket and associate cricket going into the future? Your thoughts on that? We have some pretty clear goals where we want to get to. Um, our number one driving goal is a 1,000 kids playing cricket. Uh on a regular basis. So that's really what's driving everything we're doing. Um, the school program, just expanding that, getting that into every school we can. And that becomes, 
you know, works its way into proper pathways for, for kids and, and junior competitions, uh, pathways for women and pathways for men and, and getting that proper structure so that when you're getting involved in cricket, you can see if I do this, this and this, then this is what I can get out of it. That yeah. is really what we're working towards, especially the women and kids. Expanding into Tartu, getting that second city, I think it can be just as big as Talon. Working out playing numbers up to a 1,000 would be amazing um, and just continuing to make it just a bit better every year. That's what we work on, just everything a bit better every year. In terms of yeah. Europe, I think what's going on at the moment is fantastic. There's potential for a European tournament, like a championship that's being talked about, which would be amazing. And just the opportunity for all of the countries to be playing more cricket is great. Having the ECN running these tournaments everywhere is fantastic. Giving teams the opportunity to travel for free, which, you know, a lot of these countries, like the players couldn't afford to do it. So to Take have time off work, taking time off work and, and having that opportunity is amazing. And I hope it continues for a long time. And I don't, I don't see any limit for European cricket at the moment. Yeah. Uh, on the women's side, I think on the women's side, right now. even more so. <laughs> I, I do hope that the women uh, do get to play more regularly. Regu yeah. Oh my God, that's a hard word. Regularly. That one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hope they will do great things. And I'm more now, after this year, going to be focusing only on the juniors. So I'll be just hoping that the kids that are coming out of my programs and our programs will end up on a national team and will be representing us across Europe. That would be awesome to see. Youngsters playing, young, young Estonians playing cricket. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Couldn't agree. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. And I think that's um, a pretty good prediction of what's in store for Estonia in the future. Um, and associate cricket as well. Uh, we just want it to be in a good place and, and have countries like Estonia and associate countries enjoying the great game of cricket because there's more to cricket and just the full member countries like Australia, India, and England, you know, and you learn so much uh, from speaking to many people in associate cricket. You know, they're all passionate people who care about the sport and want what's best for it and want it to uh, have an impact on people's lives in their country. And, and no doubt you're doing that in Estonia, which is, um, which is fantastic. So great to hear your insights there, David and Ragnar, on the future of, of cricket in Estonia and associate cricket as well well david and ragnar thank you for joining me for this associate cricket series episode to discuss all things estonian cricket i've enjoyed it immensely and uh, thank you to everyone who's listened to this episode as well um and they would have learned loads from listening to this episode today so david and ragnar if people want to get in touch with the estonian cricket association or if they have any questions or queries or just curious um where can they do that? Where can they find you? So we're active on Instagram, Facebook, uh, the YouTube channel as well. You can uh, drop a comment on that if you want. Uh, you can check out the website, estoniancricket.com. It has pretty much everything you want to know about Estonian cricket there. Uh, or just email info at estoniancricket.com. Uh, we will leave links to those in the description uh, for everyone to access uh, those social media platforms or Estonia cricket in terms of the association there. Now, Ragnar, I know you do this on the YouTube channel. Yes, I think you know what I'm going to say to you. Um, you always end the video with a uh, Estonian term in cricket. Now, I thought that was a good way to end this episode is for you to say one cricket term in Estonian for all of us to learn a little bit of Estonian language. So you can pick any term that you want um, and say it in English and Estonian so we can all learn a bit of Estonian. So take it away. Thank you. 
I'll get it stuck here. Uh, so one word in Estonian, one cricket term in Estonian, uh, uh, let's pick uh, how's that? How's that? And in Estonian it is kuidas se? How's that? In Estonian is kuidas se? Well, I'm not going to attempt to say that because <laughs> <no>. um, <laughs> my Estonian's not really that flash. Um, but thank you for that. And I hope everyone learned a little bit of Estonian, uh, which is a language foreign to us all. Uh, but it's good to learn a new language and good to hear cricket terms in a different language. It's got something about it. It's got a nice ring to it. So uh, thank you for that, Ragnar. I appreciate you doing that. I just thought that was a nice touch. Give the episode a bit of a cultural feel to it and, and to learn about another country as well. Uh, before we go, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to get to. Uh, sorry, let me say that again. <laughs> Lost my train of thought there. Uh, before we go, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. So the podcast is available on Anchor, Spotify, and on Apple Podcasts. Once again, thank you, David and Ragnar, for joining me today to discuss all things Estonia cricket. I hope all of you watching or listening to this Associate Cricket Series episode learned a lot about cricket in Estonia from David and Ragnar. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.